Hello, this is Ian again from Action Language, and I'm joined today by one of our volunteers, Roxana. Hi, Ian. Hi, Roxana. How are you? Great. And today we're going to talk a little bit about pronunciation, and particularly pronunciation in English. So, Roxana, I wanted to ask you, what did you find most difficult about English pronunciation? Uh, so the first thing for Farsi speakers is the stress sound. And uh, because in Persian, we have not any stress on the word and all the phrases have the same stress. So it's quite, uh, it's quite um, hard to use the stress sound, but we can't understand and we can consider while you have as why you where you put the stress on a word but using this is too difficult and the other thing is using the combination of t and h and uh, we have not the same similar sound in persian it's something like c or not t exactly but the combination of t and c and it's quite hard and um, the other thing is, mm, mm, the other thing is some word like a street, because we don't have some uh, word beginning with s. So we all the time try to say a street instead of street. But uh, there are some few recommendations for the Farsi speakers to improve their accent. For example, um, listening to radio or watching movie or just listening to podcast or any native speakers in English talking just um, just to um, just to listen about where are the stress and how they are um, controlling their tonation in the phrases so it's quite useful okay so let's look at some of the things that you said so firstly about the stress so this is you know where the the strongest sound in the word is and in English this can move uh, in many languages it's the beginning or the end of the word but in English uh, as I said it can move so a one example word is photograph photographic photographer so three words with the same uh, origin, but as the word gets longer, the stress moves around. Um, I think you maybe just have to learn these words uh, and where the stress is, um, you know, and I think Roxana is correct. The best way to do this is by listening and watching. And there are rules. You can get a book of pronunciation rules, but it will take you longer to learn the rules than it will to learn the words. So listen, learn and repeat, I think is exactly right. Um, TH sounds. I think this is difficult for everybody. Uh, most languages seem not to have the TH sound in the same way. And of course, we have two. So we have the and th. And when I teach it to people, I tell them about where to put their tongue. But some people think it's a bit rude to show your tongue in this. But I think if somebody says this or sis instead of this, I can understand what he or she is saying. So it's maybe not so important for having a conversation, but it is maybe important for yourself. Um, you know, if you want to feel comfortable. So the best way I think is to practice and to put your hand here and feel the difference between the, the, and th, uh, and watch your mouth. So take your mirror and practice the, what you do with your mouth, the, and th. I think a very good way to do this is singing, is to sing a song. <laughs> So I don't know, Roxana, if it's the same for you when you were young, but, uh, you know, we spent a lot of time when we were kids with the mirror and uh, a hairbrush singing songs. So I would recommend 
this uh, practice, watch your mouth when you sing and it will help you. But maybe when you are alone. Yeah, perfect. This is really important to my learning new language because it will open up new windows to your profession and to your life. But finally, we are not native English speakers. And this is not that much bad if having some problem in pronunciation. But when you are going to professionally speak with someone, it shows that how much uh, professional you are in uh, speaking and it may improve your expertise in some way. But, but finally, there are differences between non-native and native uh, speakers. And just it's, it's just a good way to try to learn. Exactly. We were talking earlier about our city, about Newcastle, which has a very particular accent, um, particular way of pronouncing uh, different words. Uh, how did you find it, Roxana, when you first came to Newcastle? So it, I find it hard uh, because, because I had the same experience in even Persian cities. We have different accents and it's hard to understand all of them at first glance, but uh, gradually you can hear more and more and you can recognize the differences. So it was hard at first, but after six months, I have uh, learned even few local phrases. So um, I think it's a good way to communicate with local people even. It's, it's, it's much better to learn instead of just afraid, not understanding. Yeah, and often I think if you come here with younger brothers and sisters or with children, uh, they start to speak English with the accent of the local place, which can be quite funny, I think, for parents and grandparents when they hear this accent. But I think you've got one word which you, you like to use. Can you tell us about this word, this, this Geordie word? <laughs> the canny? <laughs> yeah, it's canny. Okay, and uh, can you give an example sentence of how you would use this word? Uh, how I um, re how, how I'm using this? Yeah. For the positive reactions, for example, saying, all right, yeah, that's good, that's fine. Yeah, okay. exactly. So we can say uh, it's canny good or the weather's canny well today the weather is not canny but last week we had some canny weather yeah for positive reactions mostly okay so thank you for sharing your experiences with english pronunciation roxana and thank you for your advice and i hope you will join me for another video for our students very soon sure thank you have a great day all right goodbye Bye-bye.